There is one word that every solo player must adhere by, and that is being prepared. If you're a solo player, you must learn to be prepared. Today, I'm going to teach you how to gear up, or aka kit up, in zombies, so you could go from your character looking like this, to your character having a large backpack, a three-plated vest, and a legendary weapon. So you like how this sounds, a like would be greatly appreciated, and let's dive in and talk about step by step on how to gear up and kit up. One of the biggest problems that solo players face is that they don't understand what the priorities are when they info the game. Many times I've seen people play and they instantly go for a pack a punch or they instantly go to buy a three plated vest and they forget the priority list. Today I'm going to give you guys the priority list and if you follow this to a T, every single time you infill, you will exfil unless you watch the end of this video because you're definitely going to watch to see what happens to me. But you should exfil. Number two, you should leave with a three plated vest and a large backpack every single time. As long as you follow these instructions, you guys will not fail. So make sure you guys get your notepads ready and let's talk about priority. So here are the list of priorities. Number one, the first thing you want to know and the rule of thumb is the faster you kill things, the faster you'll get things done. And that falls under weapon rarity. If you don't understand the weapon rarity, you are going to be completely playing the game wrong. The faster you're able to level up in weapon rarity, the faster and more efficient you're going to be with doing everything else. So priority number one is making sure your gray weapon goes from green to blue to purple to legendary as quickly as you possibly can. The fastest way to do this is getting 5,000 points and rushing the red area and picking up a legendary weapon from there. But I wouldn't recommend this. I'm going to have advanced tips video later showing you guys exactly how to rush the, uh, you know, the red zone without dying. But that's going to be for a future video. Right now, you're infilling. Your priority, guys, is getting a green or blue weapon as quickly as you possibly can. There's multiple ways of actually doing this. Number one is being lucky and finding one and going to the correct places. I will have another video on the best landing locations later. But as of right now, that is your priority and my priority is making sure you understand it. After you have that green or blue weapon and if you get lucky purple weapon, now it's time to you set your priorities on what else will give you a huge advantage on killing zombies faster. And that is guys, perk. Of course, anything like speed cola, anything that has to do with perks involved that is going to be your priority these are hard to come by so perks and mods go hand in hand unfortunately i don't think mods are more important than perks due to the fact that mods you could only apply one to one weapon and you'll find a lot of them but you could only use one so perks should be your number one priority and one mistake i see commonly being made people get money and they automatically go to the perk machine and buy that perk you do not want to do this because remember, you want to be as efficient as possible. And if you don't have your weapon where you legendary, you won't be doing nothing. Think of it this way. You could have a legendary weapon, just pack a punch one, and you will be able to survive in the red zone. As opposed to having a gray weapon packaged punched all the way to level three and not survive in the red zone. Just let that sink in and think a little bit about that. What is more important? Weapon rarity. All right. Now that we got that, we know the weapon is number one. We know the perks are number two. We know mods come in like at 2A, 2B. Number three is a backpack. Now, why is a backpack more important than a self-revive or the pack-a-punch? The reason why a backpack is more important is because the more stuff you're able to carry, not only are you going to be able to sell more stuff, which is going to help you what get more money, and in addition to that, it's going to let you carry more plates. Plates are your bread and butter plates are your best friends this is going to avoid you from going down constantly and one of the beautiful things about this game is that now you're able to pop in that you know that three plates automatically while you're running or sprinting or reloading whatever you're doing you're going to be able to be using plating up so that makes it really good after the backpack guys you want to get a blue one real fast the best places to actually find a blue backpack is the locker rooms you go to the locker rooms go to any place that has locker rooms you are almost i would say 65% to 75% sure of getting a blue backpack. So you definitely want to make sure you check those locker rooms as much as you possibly can. This is going to be over in the white area. 
Now, your, your, your next priority is getting a self-revive because it's always good to have a self-revive in your back pocket. Usually, as you're looking for the backpack and as you're picking up these mods, you theoretically will come across a self-revive. So, as soon as you get one, go ahead and get it. The last thing in your list has to be the Pack-a-Punch, okay? Because if you do not have a legendary weapon or at least a purple weapon, Pack-a-Punching is a waste of money and a waste of funds. Theoretically, you can kill almost any zombie in the white zone with just a gray weapon. And the higher the rarity, the faster that's going to be. So do keep that in mind. Priority is super duper important. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's talk about when you should move out of the white zone. Because everything that we've been doing has been in the white zone. We've been getting the blue backpack. We've been getting a weapon that's either green or blue, hopefully blue. And we're still in the white zone. Now it's time for a move from the white zone into the yellow zone now the reason we want to go to the yellow zone is because number one we want a shot at getting a legendary weapon or a purple weapon number two we want a shot at getting a bigger backpack and number three we want a shot at getting a larger you know chest piece now there are two ways to approach this the best thing i would do is when you're getting ready to move out of the white zone this is the list you kind of want to have in your back of the mind before you go in number one you want to have ten thousand dollars or ten thousand points i'm going to explain why number two you want to make sure of course you have a self revive and number three guys you want to make sure before you go over there you at least have two perks in your gun it could be any perk but anything that helps and of course a mod now that you have the checklist out of the way let's talk about what we're going to be doing as soon as we go into the into the orange room as soon as we go into the orange room we are not going to go look for bounties we're not going to go look for contracts our main objective going into the uh you know the orange room is locating at least a three plate vest that's going to be our number one priority once we go in there and number two is going to be pack a punchy okay that's going to be things so first thing i would do i would go in there and i would start looting any area once again that has of course lockers these areas are very very good and the majority of the time i'm gonna say once again 65 to 75 percent you will find a three plate if for some reason you spend five minutes looking around and you feel like you're getting a little bit overwhelmed by zombies now it's time to go hit a buy station in the orange area and buy yourselves a three place you're gonna spend the three thousand you're gonna spend the ten thousand dollars right there but you already have a three plate you already have a blue backpack that is good enough now it's time to work on priority number one which is getting yourself a legendary weapon now in order for you to do this you're going to need to go back into the white area and get five thousand points i would tell you to stay in the uh, orange area but remember you don't have a weapon pack and punch so you're going to want to leave that orange area come back to the white area collect yourself five thousand points and now it's time to go yolo it though you got to go in you got to risk it for the biscuit and what you're going to want to do is you have yourself the three plates you have yourself the self revive so if you go down you'll be able to get back up you're going to go into this tower that i'm going right here and there's going to be a kind of like a line a you know a grapple hook or an extension that's going to allow you to propel from the orange area all the way to the red area without getting shot what you want to do is when you land you want to beeline your way into the or into the red area look at the wall if the wall has an orange ar or lmg you are gravy baby you made it what you want to do is pick up that orange weapon and duck out and head out of that red area because now it's time to pack a punch you only need to pack a punch once so what does this mean we need another five thousand points because just with one pack a punch with that orange weapon is enough to handle anything in the red zone it's going to take you a little bit longer to kill people because it's not packaged punch twice or three times but you will be able to survive and that is the main important thing now this is the big thing you're gonna want to make sure you at least get into pack a punch too and you guys should be good but if you can't what you want to do is start farming stuff in the orange zone this is going to be like around you're gonna have like 20 to 15 minutes around this time if done this correctly or even more it just depends how fast you are and how efficient you are around this time you want to start farming stuff in the orange area and you're gonna see how things are dying really really quick and you're not even struggling because your weapon is a legendary and it's pack a punch the great thing about this is you're going to be starting getting better schematics you're going to start getting better loot and you're going to start getting more perks to apply to your weapon making you guys even more powerful now it's time to decide 
if you have a good set of schematics, if you got yourself some gold schematics that you don't have, I would suggest exfilling. If you have yourself a large backpack, you have yourself a three plate, you have yourself a legendary that you like, exfil. But if you guys want to risk it a little bit more and want to venture a little bit into the red area and see what else is available, you're going to want to make sure you pack a punch again. Once again, by the time you get done a couple of contracts within the orange area, you should have a good amount of money to pack a punch again, which is 10,000 points. And then go and pack a punch in the uh, orange area. And that's going to increase your weapon to a pack a punch level too. Now, this should give you like at least 15 to 20 minutes to mess around in the red area. Unfortunately, guys, if you're like me, this is exactly what happened when I was going to pack a punch for the second time and try to get two more additional contracts done. This is what happened, guys. And boy, was I living. You guys don't even know how upset and frustrated I was when this happened. If this has ever happened to you, I want to know in the comment section down below, what would you have done with this gear, with this loot, if you would have gotten up the crane, up the lift, and the game would have glitched out and got stuck. I am telling you, I was so upset. I even tried the storm to down me, and it still would not let me get up, dude. I was so tilted. I even altered the floor to see if maybe I could get my gear, but I didn't. So definitely do not, do not go up the crane. Do not get stuck, guys. Exfil as soon as you have your loot, and don't get greedy, because sometimes getting greedy will cause this to happen to you. I hope you guys are enjoying our guides here for you solo players out there. If you are doing a huge favor, guys, drop a comment, drop a like. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on all your notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.